Hi, everyone online. Hi, everyone in person. It's good to see you all. Um, as usual, let's find a comfortable shape. So you could start sitting, you could start lying back. If you're at home or in your office, you can grab a chair if you prefer to start by sitting upright in a chair. We'll pause for just a couple of moments, maybe about five minutes to sit or lie back. Let's give ourselves some time to slow down. And that gentle reminder that you have total agency and choice over what you do for the next 45 minutes in this practice. So if something doesn't feel safe or comfortable or supportive, please back out of it and take care of yourself. If you're in person and you know something doesn't feel safe and you back out and you wanna come right back to the shape you're in, no judgment. You don't have to give anyone a reason why, just come back and find support, find grounding. And with that said, that's where we kind of begin, right? Into those places of grounding. When you hear that term grounding, how do you define that in your body? How do you allow your physical body to feel grounding or anchoring or rooting? And perhaps you take that feeling from the physical body into an energetic body, feeling your energy more grounded and rooted. And that gentle reminder that how we breathe connects and has a relationship with this either physical or energetic or both feelings of grounding and rooting. So too, as we settle, just letting your body breathe for you. Coming to feel the stillness and stability of the earth beneath you. Letting your body feel as if it's growing deep, wide roots. And as you find this anchor grounding feeling, can you also in relationship feel a little lifting up, down creating up? this unification of opposites, this balance of energy and strength down, a little more effortless, easeful lifting up. Softening through the face and the jaw and the chest. Might find benefit in softening through the upper back shoulder blades, down into the low back and the belly. I'm gonna pause here for about five breaths. Maybe your mind wanders knowing that's just fine if your mind wanders. Maybe your mind stays a little more anchored with grounding. Maybe your mind stays anchored with your breath. The practice here is just paying attention to what happens. So try, and that's the word try, following, feeling, noticing.
And the practice of letting that go, coming back to your body breathing. Let's practice now embodiment. We come back to feeling sensation, feeling inside, noticing what you sense when you're breathing in and breathing out. And coming into embodiment, into your body, tapping into places of resource and strength. Where do you naturally feel strong? Maybe that is, you know, a physical feeling. Maybe it's an energetic feeling. And tapping into these places of strength as resource. And then as we find and feel these places of resource and strength, practicing gratitude for these places, Just bringing some gratitude to the places you feel strength. Maybe that's your breath. And we'll pause for about three, four, five more breaths right here. And then following your breath, see if you can feel that full exhale, let all of the air out, softening again where you can soften. And then we'll transition onto our back. So if you're not there, we'll just roll over. We'll come onto our back with our knees bent. So good old fashioned constructive rest pose. We'll spend just a little bit of time down here uh, doing a little bit of core wake up. So you can bring your hands right away down to your lower ribs. Elbows can be nice and anchored into the floor, just helping provide a little more stability. And we come to this place quite often in this practice. So hands, fingers gently on the lower ribs, your thumbs on the back ribs. And as you exhale, feeling the ribs draw down and knit together, they draw in. Inhale, lateral breath, filling up the sides of the rib cage. The ribs get wider. Exhale and inhale at your own natural, authentic, rhythmic rate. Now, when you understand and you can feel the ribs and you get that, you're like, okay, I feel that. Yeah, that's coming along. Draw your awareness to your navel and see if you can feel your navel in relationship to the ribs. So when you exhale, your ribs are going to draw in and your navel is gonna draw down. And when you inhale with tone, your navel is going to float up and your ribs are going to expand. Feel free to put a hand on your ribs and one on your lower abdominals navel if you feel that might help you. So the navel draws down into the floor without changing the shape of your bones. It's more muscular. And as we inhale, Filling up, exhale, letting go. Two more breaths. And then when you feel your next exhale, let's take your arms behind your head. So really your hands behind your head. Elbows a little wide. 
And then draw awareness to the back of the rib cage. Just see if you can feel nice and wide, almost like the back of your ribs were energetically as wide as your elbows. And then we're gonna work down in the hip creases today a little more. So without looking, see if you can feel your hip crease. It's right where your pants kind of bunch up there by your hips, where your leg connects into your hip. And we're gonna try and keep a little more space and ease there. So using your core more, when you exhale, draw your ribs down and in and lift your shoulders and head, tuck your chin and you can look right into your hip creases. So with a little less a uh, pull or tug or tension in the hip crease, maybe lift up a little more using your core less than your hips. And then inhale, long and strong, lower down. Exhale, ribs knit, navel to spine, lift the shoulders, lift the head, tuck the chin, look into those hip creases. Inhale, lower down. Three more on your own. So feeling a little more, hopefully feeling a little more connection through your core abdominals with less grip in the front of the hip. Sometimes our automatic connection here is to really grip in the hip and the butt to help pull us up. So trying to keep the butt glutes legs softer and work a little more from that abdominal rib connection. And then the next time you sit up, if you wanna add a little challenge, you're gonna stay in that little sit up. Just come up to your place of challenge and see what you feel in the front of your hips. Try and soften through the face and the jaw and then grounding down through the back of the hips, we're gonna bring your legs up to tabletop with your toes up towards the ceiling. We're just gonna try and hold up here and do three hamstring stretches. So bending and straightening. Keep your navel drawing down, your spine nice and neutral. Then when your legs are in that hamstring stretch, Inhale, lower your head all the way down. Keep your legs up. All right, let your head come all the way down. Arms are gonna come down to you, your sides, palms face down. So your legs fit into your hip socket. So if we can visualize a socket, right? And then the legs have a ball that fit in that socket and the legs roll around. So. We're gonna roll your knees out and your heels in. And then we're gonna roll your knees in and your heels out. Do that just a couple of times. You feel the legs rolling in the sockets. I'm gonna be really quiet so you can explore and understand this rolling. You're externally rotating and internally rotating your legs in the hip socket. Next time you roll out, your knees out and your heels in, if it works for you, try and get your heels together. Push your heels together, great. Bring your hands back behind your head, elbows wide and see if you can do three more of those little sit-ups. So from your exhale, drawing the ribs down, the navel down, we roll up, inhale, lower down, two more. If this is a little too challenging, no big deal, bend your knees or bring your feet all the way to the floor, meet yourself where you are. If this is a little too easy, lower your heels and take your legs out at a little lower angle. Everybody has a place to challenge themselves and work. Last one. And then with strength and control, we lower all the way down. 
bring the arms back out to the side. Practice noticing. So whatever you notice for three breaths. And then full exhale. And then we've got to roll over and come on up to standing. So you might roll over to the side. You might draw your knees up, hold on to the back of the legs. We're all going to roll up. So just finding your way. And then we'll take a wide stride. Woo, got lightheaded. All right, so if you're in the room, feel free to look out at the lake. It's really beautiful out there. Heels will come in a little bit and your toes will go out. And we're just gonna go up and down in a pretty slow sumo squat, just warming up ankles, knees, and hips. So you might add some internal resistance. You might imagine you have some heavy weight. You're going up and down. Trying to keep that weight nice and equal through the feet. We'll do three more. Fabulous. And then we'll come all the way on up and step our feet together and just turn towards the back of the mat or turn to face the front of the mat maybe and walk to the back of the mat. Maybe that makes more sense. All right, and then let your arms hang. All right, so again, come into the grounding of the feet into the earth. And from that grounding, can you feel how your legs connect up into your hips? So with a little bend in the knee, take your thigh bone, which is different than your pelvis, right hip, left hip, make the pelvis. So if you wanna put your hand on your pelvis, you could. You're gonna push your thigh bones back. So the thigh bone pushes back, which might give you that rebound energy that the shin's drawing forward a little bit. And then we're gonna try and keep your spine pretty neutral and press the hip crease back and tip over. Really strong through your spine. And then we're gonna come back up two more times. And then after this third one, we're gonna come all the way on up and take a full body stretch. So when you come up, you can swing your arms up, reach, from the grounding into the earth, can you feel that rebound of lift up? Bend your knees a little bit and then pull the hip creases back. So let the action start from the hip. So the hip crease draws back and that's how we start the forward flexion coming forward. This time we're gonna come all the way over to your fingertips. If this is a little too much on your low back, bend your knees quite a bit. You can have your fingertips on the floor, your shins are up on your thigh bones, two breaths. Notice what you notice. Then grounding in the feet, exhale, come all the way back on up, stretch your arms overhead and inhale arms to the side and then step your feet wide. All right, so if we take your knees and your toes a little more parallel and press into the big toes and the pinky toes, and we really anchor down, then we're gonna press those hip creases back again and do a forward fold with wide legs and come back up two more times. So exploring here what this feels like in your hip crease. We have quite a bit of range of motion when we go more forward or straight out over the hip like this. We really wanna understand that we wanna initiate this movement from 
the hip crease from the pelvis itself, from the hips, more so than rounding in the low back. Great, and then when we come back up with the hands on the pelvis, try and stabilize the pelvis and pick up your left heel. A Little bit like what we did on the floor, you're gonna internally rotate the leg. So you're gonna roll your left knee in, your right left heel out, internally rotate it and put that heel down and then externally rotate your right leg. Line your heels up and then find grounding and lift up through the pelvis. Great, exhale, bending your right knee. Inhale, straightening. So it's like half of the sumo. From your breathing, last one. Next time your right leg is straightish, pause. Stabilize your pelvis. Can you just like feel the right thigh bone itself roll in the socket as you internally rotate the right leg in? Lift the left toes and feel external rotation. Bringing the left knee out over the left middle toe, grounding, bending, and straightening the left knee three times. Fabulous. Next time your left knee is straightish, pause. Lift the left toes and internally rotate the left leg. So both knees are looking a little more forward with your toes. From your hip creases, tip, wide leg forward fold. Come back up. If you want to add more challenge, swing the arms up towards the ceiling, which is going to give you a strong, long lever. Pull the hip creases back and reach the arms out. Maybe just tap the earth and come back up one more time. One more after this. Push your hip creases, push your butt back. See how long you can feel. Excellent. There we go. Way out in the balls of the feet a little more as you come up. It's going to get you a little more into your core. Great. Bring your hands down onto your pelvis. So in your own understanding, find and define your pelvis. Okay. So you have this big bony pelvic structure, like a bowl. And then inside, right, we have how the legs fit into the bowl fit into the hip socket, okay? So we're gonna pick up that left heel, feel the separation, feel the difference between the leg rolling in and your hip. So you have your left hip and then you're gonna roll the leg in. See if you can just feel that. And then the right side, you have the right hip and then you have the right leg, can you feel that? Sometimes we're so tight in the hip, it all feels the same. <laughs> Then we're gonna bend the right knee and we're gonna pause for a moment. So this came up, this question came up in Tuesday's class, okay? If you're right here and your belly button is facing more like straight out, right? Like sometimes we're told to put our hips like between two panes of glass. That doesn't always feel very good on everybody's back, right? If you're kind of side tipping into that side right hip, it feels pretty tight to me. So just do that a couple of times and see what that feels like. Like if you're taking your right hip bone to your right knee, mine feels really tight. Okay, and then bring that right hip bone back up and come back to the shape you started in. Bring your hands back on your pelvic bowl. Now keep your legs stable and steer your pelvis around to the right just a little bit. So you're kind of taking your left hip bone around. You're at a little bit different diagonal, okay? So now take both hip bones and tip and see if that feels any different in your hip socket. And do that a couple times. Fabulous, and then come all the way on up, straighten your right leg, feel your right leg 
move in your hip socket, then feel your left leg move in the left hip socket. Okay, bending your left knee and pausing. So if my belly button is more between two panes of glass here, if I side tip here, it gets jammed up in my hip pretty quick. I don't know how your hip socket, so you're def kind of defining and trying to understand your hip socket. Okay, and then you can steer your pelvis around a little more towards the left inner leg. It's kind of bringing that right hip bone around and then tipping and coming up a couple of times. If you're in the room, is this making sense? You feel a little difference in the hip and how it moves? All right, so then come all the way on up and steer both legs back. And then both legs facing a little more forward. We'll tip all the way over and come back up. Add your arms if you want more challenge. So you can really stretch the arms up reach, bring the weight out in the balls of the feet, which is going to help get you a little deeper into that low core. We love to live in our heels. There you go. Bring the weight out, out, out into the balls of the feet. Last one. And then come all the way on up. Bring your hands down to your hips. And then just turn to face this way really quick. So I'm gonna try and do a demo really quick. So here's what we're gonna cover. Left leg is rolling in. So here's my hips, left leg rolls in, right leg rolls out. If I keep my belly button facing you all and I try to tip, I don't have a ton of range of motion. If I take my pelvis around a little bit, right? I have a lot more range of motion. Okay, try not to get this confused though with high lunge, which is then taking your legs around like this and your pelvis like this. This is very different. So if your back leg is anchored, this left hip will not probably come all the way around. It's a lot of load on your hips, okay? So you're just going around a little bit, okay? Cool, all right, both legs face forward. Let's try it. It's so a little different. We're going to exhale, sweep your arms out and up. For a little extra challenge, we're going to hold the arms up. If they get tired, drop them down, okay? But we're going to try and really stretch long. Take the left leg and roll it in. Take the right leg and roll it out. About heel to heel, bend your right knee into that warrior two pose and open your arms, warrior two. Good. From here, take your left hand onto your left hip bone and steer it around a little bit. Inhale, lift your spine. Exhale, tip, elbow to knee. If you want more challenge, your right elbow can come down and grab the outside of your right foot, ankle. Good. Left arm's going to sweep up towards the ceiling and spin your chest. Three breaths. Okay, a little more challenging. We're gonna exhale, take your left arm down all the way to the floor, lift your left back heel, spin it around to a low lunge. More challenging is elbows to knee. Less challenging is your left knee comes down onto the floor, okay? So you could have your left knee down and your finger pads down. You can have your left knee up, elbows to your thigh bone. Three breaths. Then with your next exhale, both hands come down to the floor. Step your back foot forward. Exhale, come all the way on up, full body stretch. Exhale, arms to the side, standing mountain meditation. So five breaths, noticing your experience, 
You might come back to grounding. You might come back to breathing. Notice what you notice. Full exhale, steps the feet wide. Face whatever direction you want to face. Maybe it's outside. You're in the room. Sweep your arms out and up. Do a nice big stretch. Right leg rolls in. Feel the leg. Left leg rolls out. Warrior two. Pause. Take a moment. Bring your right hand onto that right hip and steer it around a little bit. And then tip over at the hip crease, left elbow to left knee. Or maybe the left hand comes and grabs the outside of the ankle. Right arm opens and we spin the chest. Build your side angle. Good reach and stretch, length and strength. Good, exhale, right hand, arm comes all the way down. Pelvis rotates, fingertips to the floor. Spin your right heel up, build your low lunge to where you are, meet yourself right where you are. Come to those places of strength and resource. Breathing, grounding, build your lunge, three breaths. With your exhale, shift the weight, bring your right foot forward to meet your left. When you're ready, exhale, come all the way on up. Inhale, arms to your side, five breaths, standing meditation. Letting go, coming back to your breath. Right leg steps wide. We come back, wide stride. Exhale, sweep your arms out to come up. Left leg rolls in, right leg rolls out. Warrior two. Side angle, tip it over at your own pace. Elbow to knee, or maybe your right arm comes down towards the floor. Find that core. Good. Left arm comes down to the floor. Lift your left heel. Rotate to your lunge. Feel, breathe, move. Build your lunge. You could stay down here with your left knee on the floor. You could stay in projected lunge, or you could sweep your arms up and come to high lunge. Everybody finds a place to be. Maybe you take child's pose or sit this one out. Just find your breath. Anchor down to lift up. Hands come to your hips. Good. Fold as far forward as you feel comfortable. Projected lunge. See if you can step your left foot forward without your hands, but if you need your hands, use them. Woo, there's those hip muscles. Exhale, sweep your arms all the way on up. Inhale, arms to the side, five breaths. Come all the way back to your experience. Notice from the inside out what you're sensing, what you're feeling. Next exhale, left leg steps wide. We refine wide stride. When you're ready, exhale, sweep your arms out and up. Right leg rolls in. Left leg rolls out, warrior two. Side angle. Build the side angle that meets you where you are. Low lunge. Maybe your right knee comes down. Maybe your elbows come to your knee. Maybe you stay in low lunge. Maybe you come up to high lunge. Woo. 
pause to feel your experience. It's nice to pause to listen to the body and to respond. So if we pause every now and then, then we get to really listen to the body. Projected lunge, we lean forward. If you can do it without your hands, fabulous. If you need your hands, fabulous. Step your back foot forward. Exhale, come all the way on up. Arms to the side, five breaths. With your next exhale, step your feet, your right foot wide. Bring your arms just out like T's. So, you know, a lot like your legs, your arms rotate in the shoulder socket. So all these ball and socket joints. So I'm just gonna roll the whole arm down and up a few times. Great, and then we're gonna bring the arms down by your side. And then swing the arms just a little bit behind you and roll your arms in so your palms face back, okay? And you can keep your feet wide, sorry about that, yep. So you're gonna have your palms facing back and then come back because oftentimes when we take the arms, shoulders back in extension, we'll jet the chest ribs forward. So. This is a really nice like, core connector to stretching the pecs. So you're gonna ooh, find the ribs, draw down and in, navel back, and stretch across the chest. Now for some of us, we're going to be able to touch the thumbs. Some of us might grab the wrists. Okay, some of us might stay right here, right? So find what's accessible. We wanna still have that sense that your upper arm bone is rolling in and your shoulder blades are really nice and wide. And then we're gonna bend the knees, pull the arms down to the floor, lift the back ribs, lift the chest, maybe look up a little bit. And then here we go from the hip creases, fold all the way over. Now let your arms reach, 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 reach up to the ceiling as you forward fold. And then with an exhale, bring your arms down. And just let your arms come down. Maybe they come in line with your feet. Maybe they come out a little bit in front of you. And then we have to find downward facing dogs. So some of us are probably gonna have to yoga crawl. You know, crawl your hands to the front and your feet back to the back of the mat. And you could bend your knees, press those hip creases back. We all know where they are now. And just try to feel a little more length in your low back. If down dog is a little too much for you, come down to tabletop. If you want some, you know, different strength, come forward to plank and do a few rounds of push-ups. That's fine. I'm gonna savor two more breaths here. And then we'll come all the way down to tabletop. We'll walk your hands out onto your finger pads. So we're gonna keep your elbows up. So you'll come to table. Walk your fingers out, keep your elbows up and pull the hip creases back to extended child's pose. And you can then roll your elbow knuckle part. So the bone of your elbow, a little more towards the floor, spreading the upper back. And if it's accessible to you, your forehead might come a little bit closer to the floor. And this is a really wonderful place to refine that knitting of the ribs, supporting the low back, navel to spine, three breaths. Sweet. 
sweet, then slowly just start to shift a little bit weight forward and back to the table. And then we're gonna come all the way forward onto your butt. So you can kind of crawl your knees forward, bring your heels out in front of you, bring your arms out. So this will be most challenging. This will be a lot less challenging and this will be even less challenging. We're gonna roll all the way onto your back. So go with control. Try to control yourself all the way down and then take a full body stretch. And then when you get down, let your heart rate, let your breath slow down. Bring your knees up over your hips again. You can hold on to the back of the legs. And then three hamstring stretches. So it's anchoring down again through the back of the pelvis. And bringing both legs down to the floor. Then right away, bring your right knee all the way up into your chest. And just circle the leg around three times in the hip socket. Just rolling that knee out around and in. And then doing that on the left side. Bringing the left knee in and circling it around three times. And then after three times, bringing the left leg back. Letting your arms come down by your side. Returning back to what it feels like to be grounded. What does that feel like in your physical body to find grounding? What does that feel like in your energy body to be grounded, to feel grounded? Adding the relationship of how you're breathing to those places of resource and strength. And then showing gratitude for those places of resource and strength. We'll take the last two, three, four minutes here in silence for self-care. So. As you check in here in those places of grounding and resource, maybe you feel you need some stretching, maybe you need some meditation, maybe you just need some rest. We're all really different. So checking in with what you need and we'll take two minutes in silence.
And just gently, quietly coming back to that practice of letting go and back again to your present time experience. Notice what you notice. And taking a moment to find and feel and savor the breath. And then as you feel your next exhale, starting some really simple, easy movements, maybe that's wiggling your toes or tapping your fingers. Maybe you'd like to draw your knees in. Maybe you'd like to take a full body stretch. If you're sitting, maybe taking a gentle twist to the right and the left, starting some easy fluid movement. And then we'll slowly come all the way on up to sitting. Um, when you get up, you can interlace your hands and we'll just do a nice upper body stretch. Oh, thanks everyone. Happy Friday. Thanks for showing up online, being part of the community. Thanks for showing up in person. It's great to see you all. Namaste. Thank you. High fives. Woohoo.